What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Friday, December 4th. December is here. And uh, this is the Best Bet Show. This is the podcast where we give out box and we tell you what to bet on and how to win cash. And the best way to track your cash winnings is on the CBS Sports app. You can go in there and get tons of great gambling advice. In fact, you can watch this podcast on the CBS Sports app very easily. Additionally, you can go in there, you go to the little scoreboard, and you star your uh, you star your favorite teams, the teams that you think that you're betting on, and that's how you can track them. You get alerts throughout the day. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. You just get it, and you get plus you get tons of great uh, stories and information from smart people like R.J. White, Kenny White, and uh, maybe even Pete Prisco. Maybe you'll get my picks tomorrow when I finally get around to writing them. Um, it's college basketball season, so you got a lot of bets going on. There's not a ton of stuff on TV. You need the updates, the alerts. By the way, we mentioned before we started, uh, I said that the the right angle sports guys had a certain pick. Kenny, um, they let me test out their their picks. They're pretty good at their picks. Yeah, no, they have right angle sports has been very good for years. Yeah. Uh, college, college football, college basketball. That's all they do. Uh, and they're very good. I, I, they're very well respected. Yeah. They hit, they, they like release a play and the line drops like five points. In- so what's, what's their play to what's their plays. Do you, you've been betting on their plays and making money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, ri- like, you're a rich yeah. man now then, huh? Eh, maybe. Good. Send me the 200. You owe me you cheapskate. <laughs> uh, I think as of we're recording this, I think they are, they're 10, three and O oh, and one of the losses was an under that got killed when somebody hit a three to send a game to overtime with 0.1 seconds remaining. So Kenny's bucking the trend on them tonight, yeah, but we won't I'm talk about, we won't talk about it because by the time this podcast comes out, we'll know if one of them's a loser or not. But uh, by I, the way, I would say this too, a college basketball. One of the like the hottest runs I've ever had in my entire life was with Kenny at the was it the Atlanta it was the Atlanta Super Bowl right yeah Atlanta, Atlanta Super Bowl yeah when he's <laughs> carrying not, around he's carrying around his black book with all his little information in it. we got I mean everything was it I was like texting my buddies back home I was like y'all Kenny's on this and then we had that Lakers thing where LeBron was ruled out we got in some middle that oh my god it was, it was an okay incredible. well now that you're you're talking about heaters how about it you're not on a heater because here's the deal. <laughs> You owe me 200. Now send me the damn. Here's the bet, guys. Before the season, he had the Lions. I had the Packers to win the division. He had the Ravens. I had the Steelers. So he owes me. There's no way he's recovering from that. He owes me 200. And he says he ain't going to pay me. So I'm sending Rocco and Guido to go take a peek at uh, Brinson's house. Don't answer the door because they'll come looking for you. Uh, by the way, if you go to handicapper.net, if you want to check out Red Angle Sports, I highly recommend it. They have like cheaper packages you can get and you'll pay it off in a couple of picks. Uh, anyway, the uh, Prisco, I, we bet on the Steelers and the, versus the Ravens for the division. Right. And and, and the, I just said the and Packers the, and the but Lions. The, but the, I mean, after you have bone with the friggin' Lions because the Ravens are such heavy favorites, Eisenberg and Costa started talking it up and you're no, like, yeah, you I need lost, another one. We'll do you Lions. Lost, we will. You lost two. Yeah, but here's the deal. And this is how you pay off your bets, because this is what you did to me when you didn't pay me until we got to Vegas. I'll pay you when I see you. The next no, time I see you're, you, no, I'll bring not. the cash. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell Port <laughs> to fly you down next week for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, you, you'll, get your, you'll get your money in 2023. All right, <laughs> let's get to the results. Speaking, good, good, it's a good thing that the college basketball has been good because the what NFL has been good. 2023, Pete? Is that what he said, 2023? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, there's the, the story is I told him, I said, I owed him 50 for some, for fantasy bet or something that, you know Remember what it was. finished the highest in the fantasy league. Yeah, and so I saw him in Vegas in March and he had gone to the, te- this is a true story, he had gone to the teller <laughs> the night before and got cleaned out. And so he couldn't get any more money out of the teller because it was the same day and you don't know, have limits on it. And so, so he was, I owed him 50 and he was, me and Nick were making him cry for it. He got, I can't give it to me. And he was begging at the window. He wanted the 50 and I was like holding it over his head. I was going to pay him, but he was, it was so funny to see a man squirming because he had no more action in Vegas unless I gave him Were you standing on Nick's shoulders? Is that why you're holling it over his head? <laughs> we all had a hot run too though. We had a hot run at a blackjack table too that day. Yeah, you uh, did. In the afternoon. Yeah. yeah, so that fifty came in. It was profitable for you. And, and I think we bet a we bet a CFL game. 
Yeah, we, it was Manziel's first start. You're like, he sucks. We're fading this guy. <laughs> yeah. He threw a bunch of pick sixes, yeah. and uh, and we and we won. We won that game. We were cleaning it up in blackjack. Anyway, point being is we're degenerates. You should download the CBS Sports app uh, and make sure to leave a five star review to this podcast if you like it. The Week Twelve records. Uh, oh yeah, Ken, <laughs> Kenny, I forgot to email you back. You you email me like, when is the podcast? I was like, we just. <laughs> um, yeah, it's over uh, with. I went zero and seven. <laughs> that's hard to do it's pretty hard to do and uh my balance sheet reflected it on sunday afternoon when uh when i thought i was gonna get paid out and i didn't uh pete went two and four no two and two i'm getting to it we are gonna give pete a rare gift of kindness in the hot in the in the in the in the sense of the holiday spirit two of pete's bets involve the denver broncos taking the points against the saints and in a teaser so we're going to wipe those from the record. You went two and two last week, Pete. That's the only fair thing to do since we picked on Wednesday because you were gallivanting all over North Carolina Thanksgiving weekend. So from this point on, since Pete needs that boost for his overall record, then we're not going to count his overall record. So congrats, Kenny. You're in first place overall now. No, <laughs> Pete, I'm in Pete's first place. His overall, <laughs> Pete says overall record reduced. RJ went four and two last week, picking up steam as we head towards the end of the season. RJ's hot. By the I, way, I went two and two. And it might have been two of the only games I got right last week. <laughs> I was terrible. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're full uh, against the spread picture. No bueno. Uh, Pete is 42, 42-27-1 against the spread for the year. Kenny, 35-27-1. RJ, 41-37-3. And, and I am in last place. 39-39-1. Pick RJ picks a lot of games. Who, who's, who's picked the most games? RJ? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, RJ picks a lot of games. Uh, so far so, in the NFL so favorites, favorites in the NFL, two points or higher. I didn't use one point favorites or one and a half, two point favorites or higher 64 and 84 with five ties, 43% they're cashing this year. Wow. So dogs are just barking like crazy. dogs are barking. And it's been big. Last week was 10 and five for the dogs. Yeah. Except the, the dogs I took didn't bark. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if you could always just take all the dogs. It's just, it's so it's These trends everything. usually turn around, but this one doesn't have to because bookmakers aren't going to adjust because they're winning. So they're not going to make any adjustments. They're going to keep making the favorites as high as they can make them, and people are laying it. So, well, let's uh, let's start with one big dog, a literal the dog pound, headed to Tennessee, Cleveland at Tennessee, playing the Titans. Titans minus six with an over under of fifty three and a half, Pete. Game's going to last two hours and 25 minutes because they're going to pound the ball and pound. That's the number one and number two rushing teams in the league. You know, I watched, I watched the Browns today on tape against, against uh, Jacksonville. They're not very good on defense, to be honest with you. That concerns me a little bit with my play here, but even so I'm still going to take the under. I think it'll be a lower scoring game. Neither defense is great, but I think they're going to run the ball. The team that established, they're both established the run. They're both good on the offensive line. They both run the football and that'll slow the game down. And, and so I'm going to go with the under. And if I had to take a team, I would lay the points. And I don't usually like laying that many points in a game of this caliber, but after watching the Browns, I, I don't think they're that good. I really don't. Baker Mayfield is not accurate. Uh, he should have had a lot more throws last week. He's missing throws. They don't scare you down the field at all. And I think defensively, they have a lot of limitations. So I, I would lean to the Titans, but I'm, my best bet is the under. Yeah, I don't think the Browns are very good either, but they're not six points worse than the Titans, who aren't as good as their record indicates either. So my best bet's the Browns plus six. Browns defense looked bad last week. They're getting Miles Garrett back. That's going to cause trouble for the Tennessee offensive line. We know Taylor Wands out for the season, um, so I think he can get after the passer, and uh, and you know Tennessee won't be able to throw as easily as they did in a game against an Indy team that was shorthanded on defense. And uh, so Tennessee coming back here, I think there's a letdown spot for them after winning that huge divisional game. Tennessee's D is nowhere near good enough to shut the Cleveland offense down. Um, 28th in DVOA, 30th in red zone uh, success rate, and 32nd on third downs, which is a key one there. So even if Baker is bad, I think they can still convert on third down against this defense. So Tennessee is the better team to me, but the look-ahead line of Tennessee minus three was closer to reality than this six-point line. So I love the Browns here. I, I like the game over, um, and, and it's it's because when you when you know what the circumstances were in a game, you kind of put a line through it. Uh, Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns played against the Vegas Raiders. It was windy and rainy, and the final was sixteen to six. The next week against Houston, windy and rainy, and you couldn't do anything on offense. 
Cleveland won 10-7. The next week against Philadelphia, the rain definitely affected play, uh, except for that game came out 22-17. to But I believe there was three touchdowns that should have been scored. There was two turnovers inside the five going in, and, and Philadelphia couldn't get in on fourth and one from the half-yard line. So there was a lot of points left off the board in that game right there. Last week they went over. Uh, Tennessee was 10 and three over last year, their last 13 games. They're seven and two over their last uh, nine games this year because both these teams' defenses are well below average and both teams' offenses are pretty darn good. So I think this is back and forth. I think they can both get to 30 points here. Yeah, I agree. And uh, by the way, overs are 17, three and one with Ryan Tannehill starting for the Tennessee Titans. The thing I, I tend to, I I'm with Pete. I look at this game and think, Oh man, these two teams run so much. They're going to you know keep the clock moving. There's not going to be a ton of points, but I think in Nick Chubb, Derek Henry and AJ Brown, you just have some really, really explosive players. And so I think you're going to get a couple of long touchdowns. Uh, Tennessee and Cleveland both have been sort of advantageous in terms of their uh, production on defense. And I, I just don't see how – I think they're just going to feed Derrick Henry again, and it's going to result in a bunch of points. Like, he he unlocks everything for Tennessee. So if I was going to take something here, I think it would be the over, even though it kind of goes against my um, – initial thought process of taking. by the way arthur smith should be a head coach next year yeah absolutely he's um i think anybody who questioned his uh how he got his job he's just dad's fairly wealthy uh, very wealthy he owns fedex <laughs> yeah he owns fedex right i mean people i mean you could have thought there could have been a little but uh, I, I checked around to guys i trust in the league this week because i'm trying to get an idea of some of these coaches and i don't know arthur smith but i heard he's he's the real deal and players respect the hell out of him, and he knows how to deal with players. And, and I, I'm telling you, somebody is going to get themselves a heck of a coach because he worked his way to get that job. He didn't get it because of who he was. He worked his butt off to get that job. Yeah, and he was a tight end coach for eight years. Yeah, for a, I mean, he put good. his time in to get to get uh, promoted to OC and two years offensive coordinator. And the offense has been tremendous. Yep. Yeah, it has. I mean, he basically, like he basically turned Ryan Tannehill into a borderline MVP candidate. Yeah. Um, after Adam Gase tried to ruin him. Patriots at the Chargers, the over under 47 and a half. The Patriots and Chargers game is a pick em, Pete. Anthony yeah, I'm, bu Lynn. I'm bucking trends here. And I know the trend of, of Belichick against rookie quarterbacks. Was he 20 and five against them? Isn't that what it is? And to make their for, against starting against him 20 and five, something like that. I'm bucking that trend. And the reason I'm bucking that trend is because I don't think this kid plays like a rookie quarterback. Even when things weren't going right last week, and there were a lot of things that went wrong in that game, particularly his offensive line, which really struggled at times, uh, he sat in there and hit some throws. If they caught the ball, they would have had a lot more completions. I think he's the real deal. Uh, and so I think that Patriots team, and I love Belichick and what he does on defense, but they don't have the talent that they've had in years past. And I think that he's going to have an opportunity to carve them up. So I'll, I'll take the Chargers at home as one of my best bets. And I am bucking that trend. Herbert doesn't play like a rookie quarterback, but his coach coaches like a rookie coach. Yes, he does. <laughs> you definitely want, if the game's going to be close, like this line indicates, you definitely want Belichick over Lynn. You trust him in closer situations than you do Lynn. Um, the New England defense has showed up in two of the last three, so I do think they might be able to slow up Herbert a little bit. I wouldn't have trusted them three weeks ago. Um, New Orleans off, uh, the New England offense wants to run the ball. Third in attempts, fourth in DVOA. Chargers can't stop the run, 31st in DVOA. So I think it's going to be a big run game where New England can get up, and then it's on Herbert to rally him back. And uh, I don't know if they'll be, he'll be able to do it. So I got a best bet Patriots pick them for me. Um, I just opposite. You're team. opposite. Of course. Got to try to catch up. I passed on this one. I, I, I thought the number was right, but uh, I, I like RJ's analysis with when you're talking about a coaching, it is a coaching mismatch in, in this football game. Uh, and you know what? I, I do like the way Cam Newton played the, th not last week, he was horrible against Arizona, but the three previous weeks, he actually showed some signs of life and is actually rated out um, a little better than above average quarterback for three straight games. First time he did that this year, uh, it was his best three game run of the entire season. So he, he's picking it up a little bit. I thought the defense was better. I was surprised to see the DVOA at 31 for the Patriots in the NFL. That, that kind of surprised me a little bit. I think their defense is a little better than that. They're not great, but they're not, they're not 31st. It was 32. So they're getting better. 
Hey, by the way, not, Kenny, on the rundown, it says you have the Patriots as the best bet. Yeah, I think when you oh, emailed it? it in, you, you had the Patriots, but it was on a, a different game, and it said Patriots, so maybe oh, we're missing see, a game for you for someone I, else. I, I, I have them three, and I like the coaching mismatch, but I looked at my Word word document right here. It doesn't have anything. Oh, I put the Patriots on the Packer game. Yeah. You know what it is? You're doing like one of those touts. You're giving half the country one big and half the country the yeah, other right. don't, even, don't, don't, don't even put my name in that syndicate. I've never, never done that. Never will. I know. I'm kidding with you. So, Kenny, you want uh, the I, I, just, I just sorted for, and I know that uh, the, the actual number that we have is 24 and five straight up against rookie quarterbacks. I just searched for it in, maybe that includes playoffs too. And I didn't include this with the, I looked in stat head and I got, a result of 20 quarterbacks. Uh, the only two in this, in this list to beat Bill Belichick uh, since 2000 is rookie quarterbacks. Geno Smith, notable. Uh, yeah, I guess Ben Roethlisberger, Ben Roethlisberger, Mark Sanchez, and Colt McCoy got him in 04, 2009, and 2010. And then Geno Smith uh, in 2013 and Russell Wilson in 2012. Oh, it's five. It's five total, yeah. Yeah. Um, but two of those are the Jets, right? And the Jets had good defense and Rex Ryan. That's his Super Bowl. Uh, one of those was Big Ben when the Steelers were awesome in 2004 and had a great defense. And then Russell Wilson, who's a special Hall of Fame caliber quarterback, uh, also playing for an elite level defense uh, in the Seahawks. Remember that famous Richard Sherman after the game, like, you mad, bro, to Tom Brady. Uh, that's not the Chargers. The Chargers are not one of those teams. And I know Justin Herbert has played awesome, and he is each week making me look like a stupid fool, Pete. You've got my number. You got 200 bucks from me coming at some point, and you you almost have already won the Herbert bet 10 weeks in. Like it's a it's a Whoa! I'll dunk on myself. You want, I you like want, hearing that. You want the Kevin Harlan one? Ho, ho, ho! Yeah. <laughs> uh at any rate, I don't care. Anthony Lynn is a bottom three coach in the NFL. This guy ran the football with 26 seconds yeah. left on on first and goal and no timeouts remaining instead of spiking it or instead of taking a pass play. He well, is forget about that. How about when he was kicked a field goal down 10? I mean, didn't kick a field goal down 10 yeah, and then yeah. he was going to do it again. And then they called timeout because he didn't know what he was doing. And they did kick the field goal. He is by all accounts, a very good human being and a very he's nice a good, person. He's a yes. He sucks. As a I think you could go back and rewind to maybe week two or week three. I think I said the identical same thing. You yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. You did. And I know that the Patriots aren't the, Patriots of old, but they're they're it's going to outcoach him, and they're going to win the game yeah. straight up. You don't have to lay any points. Give me the Patriots as a best bet. Rams minus three at Cardinals, over under forty eight and a half. What do you think, Pete? The Rams went to Tampa and looked fantastic and dominant, and I think they got a little full themselves. In fact, I had the 49ers as one of my best bets last week. I thought they would – I didn't know if they'd win the game, but I thought they'd hang around. That number was bloated, and it actually came down a little bit. Um, this number is right. Uh, the Cardinals just haven't – they've looked disjointed on offense. Murray hasn't played the, the way I thought he would play uh, in the last couple of weeks, and so I'm going to go with the Rams. I think McVay in this spot will get his team back up again. That was a tough loss. It was a bad loss. Uh, I think the Rams will cover this number and win the game. So I'll take the Rams. Best bet. The value appears to be on Arizona uh, on the face of it. He has three point home dogs here, similar teams in the division, but Kyler doesn't look right. Arizona's offense top 430 yards in five straight games, then averaged 306 yards the last two weeks. And then Rams defense is a touch ma tough matchup for anyone. Number one in points per drive. They're good versus the run in the pass. But the Rams offense has 11 turnovers in the last four games. They're only 23rd in points per drive on the season. So if I was taking anything in this game, I would lean to the under 48 and a half. Um, it's an important game in a playoff race. I think we could see a conservative game on both sides for these coaches. But I don't really love the spread either way. But lean to the under. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the Rams. Uh uh, they're just the better football team, um, both sides of the football. Arizona has been vastly improved this year. Uh, Kyler Murray was great early on, but he has come back to earth a little bit the last three weeks and they're 0 four ATS the last four weeks and a lot of travel, you know, up to Seattle, out to new England, back home here, no fans. Um, Rams have had some travel of their own uh, to Miami and Tampa and played San Francisco last week. They played a, a close game, but that's a really well-coached football team. So still not sold on Cliff Kingsbury. If he's the guy, I think McVay's the better coach in this game and uh, well-balanced both uh, their offense and defenses in the top 10 in DVOA. Um, Arizona starting to get a couple injuries on, on defense again, and they start to get banged up a little bit. That defense falls quick. So I'll, I'll take the Rams coming off a loss. Yeah. I, I, Rams are my favorite bet of the entire week. 
Um, they defensively match up really well with what Arizona wants to do. Jalen Ramsey can lock down DeAndre Hopkins or at least minimize uh, his presence there. And I think then you're going to have Aaron Donald just cooking against a Kyler Murray, a less mobile Kyler Murray who doesn't want to take hits because his arm is banged up, is losing some of his accuracy, is not running the football as well. They started getting to, getting going when he was running the football. They need that. They don't have it. I think they struggle offensively. I think the Rams blow them out, and, uh, and we get a final score of like 31 to 10. So I will take the Rams. And I will also take the under as a best bet. If I were wagering my, I don't want to say harder money, because, you know, talking about football with you guys. Uh, but if I were wagering my personal cash on this, I would do two units on the Rams and one on the under. That Wait, this is your best bet of the entire week? The Rams. Oh, uh, maybe I should change my pick then. <laughs> He's due. He's due. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Wait, Kenny, do you have sports on tonight? You don't, do you? No, I don't. So we're good. Oh, cool. All right. Well, Thursday I night Rob to be like, hey, don't call Kennedy like 5.58. He's like, no, he's, there's no football. He's not on. Um, <laughs> oh, great. All right. Well, then no rush. I don't know why they call every time they call like two, 2.50 or five, five, five surprised they didn't, didn't create. I'm surprised they didn't create a segment where Kenny can pick apart my power rankings. Oh, my God. That was ridiculous. <laughs> we, did, we did 30 minutes on like, it's like, like, Adam Gase admits he hasn't done a good job with Sam Darnold. It's like, yeah, you're 0-11 or whatever. It's like, yeah, no kidding, pal. He's hurt. You can't win games. Um, anyway. I love when you try and pick apart my power rankings. It just makes my day. I mean, it's, they were like, they were like, give us five things about Pete's power rankings that you don't like. I was like, I don't want to read this article. Like, what do you, what do you want me to do? It's no. only a two-minute read. Come on. <laughs> no, no. Um, Broncos at Chiefs. It is a two-minute read. It Broncos is a two-minute read. Chiefs minus 14, over under 51, Pete. You want, you going back yeah. to the Broncos? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. They actually have a quarterback this week. Um, backdoor is coming. I, I, you guys know how much I love Patrick Mahomes and love watching that offense, and they're clicking right now. And all that stuff, of, we'll try the running game. We'll do this. We'll do that. Well, that's gone to the side. It's back to being Patrick Mahomes throwing it around you know, all over the place. But I think that the defense still has some issues, and I do think that they're going to get a backdoor cover here. So I'll take the Broncos as one of my best bets. Yeah, this is a lot of points against a good defense. Uh, Kate Casey won 43-16 to 16 in the first meeting, but it was their only game of the year. They went under 300 yards of offense. They got a lot of turnovers in that game <coughs> and helped them out. Um, the KC defense is weak against the run and in the red zone, so I could see Denver getting to 20 points here. So, uh, yeah, I would lean to Denver, but with the offensive DVOA rankings of 1-32 and 32 between these two teams, I don't feel super confident about backing Denver because you could easily also be 45-10, to 10, you know, and, and nobody would question it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Denver's thirty second though um, deep, uh, on the offensive end. Obviously, there's been some games where, uh, you know, last week. Take last week's game, just throw it out early in the season. This team had a lot of injuries on offense. Uh, they're they're about 24, 25th in that spot. They're not great, but yeah, I think they have enough to stay within this number. This is such a big number. Kansas City has to have a letdown sooner or later. Um, they just played such a demanding schedule. It seems like. Um, but they're zero three ATS. I mean, they they beat their last uh, six teams but they haven't covered the spread the last three weeks. So um, 14 is such a big number in the NFL uh, home revenge. Denver lost earlier this year. And as Pete said, Hey, they got a quarterback. They got three quarterbacks this week, lock Driscoll and uh, Rip are all eligible to play. So big upgrade. What a, what a last week was amazing. Um, Kendall Hinton uh, was probably the lowest rated quarterback I've ever had in the NFL game, except for until last night when RG three surpassed that. Um but there was a, it was an 11 and a half point drop off uh, from Drew Locke to, uh, to Hinton. Jeez. And that wasn't enough. There still wasn't enough. You're right. It wasn't yeah. enough. Well, I mean, to put yeah, but you can't, you can't really say that. I mean, you could say it's a drop off, but you can't say it's not enough because the game flow was different with no ability to make a play. Don't you agree? Plus, yeah, well, that's what I say. It could have been worse. I mean, it could be worth more than that because he, he wasn't able to get any game oh, flow going. I mean, in hindsight, it, opened, it came back up at 15, Saints minus 15, and closed at, like, Saints minus 17. Whatever the number was, it was free money. Like, the, like the Broncos just couldn't do anything on offense. And I think that's sort of an interesting contextual point here because – so the Broncos were minus – plus 15 to the Saints without having a quarterback. And, and you know, they're they, 14 with – 
three healthy quarterbacks. Teams have been able to run with a wildcat uh, several different teams. I know the Dolphins did it years ago. Yeah, but they, they, they had to go to the wildcat and they did it efficiently. You know, it's like running the running the option in college football where you don't have a qu passing quarterback. You figure out how to make those blocks, figure out how to get the holes. You grind it out four or five yards here and there, and you, you, you keep the football and you end up getting the end zone. That team, Denver, had zero time to practice that type of offense. And then they throw Hinton in there and play quarterback, you know, four or five years. So um, that, that was. It wasn't really even cool. a good quarterback to begin with. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He did a nice game. Well, against before, he tore, before he tore up his knee, he wasn't awful, though. Yeah, he wasn't too. Yeah. Um, he did an admirable job. We get, give him credit for it. But I, I, yeah, I would probably lean Broncos here, too. We talk about all the dogs, how they've been barking. The Chiefs have been playing really well. And I think, you know, if you want to take like the chalky approach to this or like the donkey approach, you look at this game and you think, well, 14 is a lot. But I don't want to get in front of Patrick Mahomes. He's the MVP right now. He's playing really well. And they could cover, but Andy Reid isn't a foot on the gas guy either. You know, he's not hes not the sort of guy who's going to just blow somebody out just to annihilate him. He'll, he'll, he'll ease up late in the game. Bills minus one at the 49ers over under 48. Pete, your boy Josh Allen. Eh, this is, I don't know if this is a big spot or not, but he, he needs it. It's a pretty big spot. This isn't the best bet for me. I had a tough time with this game because I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for the 49ers and what Kyle Shanahan has done. I loved them last week. Uh, the, they're just tough physical team. And if they get into the playoffs, they're going to be a team nobody wants to play. I can tell you that because they're going to get guys back. They might have Garoppolo back. They probably have, could have Kittle back. But in this game, I'm going to lean to the Bills. They're not bet for uh, I do like Josh Allen to go out there and throw it around. Remember the last time they were in this building, they lost on the Hail Mary. Uh, I think this time it won't come to that. They'll find a way to win the game. I'll take Buffalo minus the one. This line was Buffalo minus two and a half. It's steamed towards San Francisco. Despite it not being Bills at 49ers, it's Bills versus 49ers on a neutral field. This game's going to be in Arizona. And uh, for that reason, I love best bet Buffalo. I think they're definitely one point better than the 49ers with what they've shown. San Francisco's defense got healthier off the bye, and they showed up last week. But so did the Buffalo defense. I mean, Buffalo's defense played way better than, than they have uh, pro previous to the bye. That San Francisco offense had their fifth straight game with multiple turnovers. Buffalo's defense is fourth in turnover percentage. So I think that could be another thing that plays into their favor so with me having buffalo graded as a far better team mullins at quarterback um for san francisco laying only one on a neutral i think i gotta go best bet buffalo here all the way buffalo all the way uh, they are they are the better football team um I, i've got them four and a half points better than san francisco and you mentioned it rj playing in arizona both teams have to travel so there's no home fans so if they were playing in San Francisco, but at least if you were playing at home, you don't have to get on the airplane and travel and, and, and go through all that. But uh, you're doing it this week. Uh, they're still down in town. Yeah, they may get some players back soon at the end of the year and could help. But they, they've had such tremendous losses, especially on the defensive side and the, in the trenches with Thomas and Ford and Bosa. Those, those guys are just – you can't replace them. They traded Alexander. Uh, the, too many losses. Great coaching job. Uh, but after playing the Rams uh, and that tough defense and their physical, uh, it's probably a beat up team. Buffalo would be ready for this game. I think Buffalo's uh, probably my best bet is, as Will said, he'll put two units on the Rams earlier. I'll put two units on the bills this week. Man, I kind of like the 49ers, but now you guys got me scared. I, I, I don't know if this counts. As, I mean, they are technically a dog, right? But it's, it's, it was three and then open back up is at one for some reason, I guess because they moved from San Francisco. To they changed sites. Two yeah. and a half. Two and a half down to one. Oh, wait. So they moved out of San Francisco. That doesn't make sense. It would move the other way. Oh, that, it would yeah. move the other way. No, you're right. But they did. They were actually, they were two and a half point favorite in uh, San Francisco. That was the opening line. The Bills were, right? Yeah, the Bills were two and a half in San Francisco. That's very stinky. Yeah. I, 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 you guys are intriguing me with your Bills selections, but I'm going to, I'm going to lean towards the 49ers here and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick them against the spread. I won't make them a best bet or anything like that. Although it would be it. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I need to, I need to oh, come back into this thing. That, that was the early line though. The Bills were the two and a half point favorite before they played the Rams. Uh, right, and, that, right, right, right. and that's, and that's why it, that's, that's why it was adjusted down. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm going to take the 49ers. I know the Bills as Pete tweeted out on uh, Thursday are playing much better defense. Josh Allen's a good player. I'm just going to trust Robert Sala and Kyle Shanahan and the coaching 
they know that they're on the fringe here and that they can kind of make a playoff run. They're not out of it yet. It sounds insane, but they win a couple of these games coming up. They've got a pretty decent schedule. They can make a move and get back in the playoffs as a wild card, get Kittle back, get Garoppolo back, if Garoppolo matters, uh, and figure out a way to to maybe steal some games. I'm not saying they're going to make a Super Bowl run or anything, but I am not counting out the 49ers, and so I will take them – uh, as a best bet. By the way, they should enjoy, they should enjoy Sala for the next whatever run they're on because he'll be a head coach next year too. So we got six coaching jobs. You think Sala, Smith, Bienemy? Is Bienemy definitely get a job? I couldn't help by Adam by, uh, by Doug Peterson and Matt Nagy. <laughs> yeah, um, he'll get interviews. I don't know if he'll get a job, but he'll probably get one. Okay. Uh, Raiders, the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, are eight point favorites on the road at the Jets over under 47. Kenny, what do you think about this game? Yeah, I, I like the Raiders a little bit. The only thing that worries me is, you know, I, I don't really play on off uh, weather, cold weather for indoor teams. I'm, I'm not a big believer in that. The, most of these guys have played college football. They played high school football. They did play outdoors. They played in cold weather. Um, it, it's just that that affects bad teams. Um, good teams. It does. And this is not a good team. They're just, they're just, they're an average football team. They have impressed me, but coming off the loss and the beating they just took, uh, Gruden is going to be all over this football team. And I, I think they come out and they put up as many as they want against the tank and jets. Uh, the, the jets just don't have it. They just don't, they're, they're whole ball offense. They're all on defense. One of the worst teams in the NFL and they, and they like it. They, that's the way they like it. They want it that way. So I just don't see them being very competitive last week. If, if they were going to be competitive against somebody, it would have been, would have been Miami for, for Adam Gase and they still weren't competitive. So this is a team that's just going the wrong direction. Yeah, looking back at last week, I was I loved the Jets last week. It seemed to line up well, but it turns out <laughs> Adam Gase. So can, did I. Adam Gase can uh, you know scarp or any of that because he's a terrible coach. If he's not intentionally taking at this point, I mean, I don't see how he gets a job again. He's got to that's got to be playing it off whenever he goes into interviews at this point. Be like, yeah, no, no that was intentional. Um, yeah, Vegas ranks thirty second in points per drive. I have to believe if Gase is trying at all, he can get his team to twenty. So if I do think that that they're going to try in this game, I would go over forty seven. Um, but it's just a lean because I don't know what to expect out of the Jets. Um, I'm not going to lay that many points with the Raiders either. So I'm just going to stay away here. By the way, I had the Jets as one of my best bets. I thought they could actually win the game outright last week. And if Sam Darnold doesn't throw that interception at the, inside the 20, they might have won the game or at least covered that number. So, uh, I, But I'm going to go with Kenny on this and lean to the Raiders. And the reason I lean to the Raiders is uh, his exact reasoning. They were terrible last week. They were flat coming off the big Kansas City game. They'll be focused here. Gruden will get them back on track, and they'll score a bunch of points. So I'll take, I'll take the Raiders. I'm not, not a best bet, but I'll lean to the Raiders as well. They were so flat. I, I think they fumbled 10 times. That was awful. It was an awful like, performance. If you look at the stats, the Falcons didn't even play that well. No. no. Like, the Raiders kept giving it to them. They just, just got gifted a bunch of turnovers. And I had Atlanta as one of my best bets, I think, last week. And so I, I thought they would win the game, but I didn't think it would be that bad. That was awful. Um, I really want to take the Jets here. I mean – the, the only thing is that the if the Raiders had, it just hadn't played that bad last week, I would love the Jets in this spot. Me too. We had the, we had this game last year. The, the Raiders came across the country against a, a Jets team that wasn't that good, and they just got beat up bad. And I know you point to the weather, Kenny. I know you mentioned everybody's – In the early playing. start. It's an early start. I don't – I can't find it because friggin' Stathead is, is – Pro football reference is a fixed stat head. This is out of control. It is so hard to use now. It used to be so easy. I could find game. I could find anything in seconds. I can't find anything with stat head. It drives me nuts. I was trying to oh, find. They were, the, they were the Oakland Raiders last year. Um, 34 to three was the yeah. final score. Yeah, yeah. But that Jets team went six and two down the stretch. That's a different yeah. team. It's a different team, but here, here, here's sort of my point. One. Deepo, were you about to say something about this? Oh, I heard something. I was going to say that the, the problem with the, Derek, I don't think Derek Carr plays well in cold weather. I don't think he remember he's from like Fresno, California. Fresno. Yeah, he never played in cold weather. Traveling east, John Gruden's team stink. Derek Carr is not good in cold weather. It's going to be 15 miles an hour wind. Um, and when you look at what the situation here, you can't really run that well against the Jets. They, they might be missing Josh Jacobs, and that means Derek Carr is going to have to throw in a bunch of bad weather. I know the Jets are terrible. I just got a sneaking suspicion. This is the week. 
By and the way, this is the last game the Jets have a chance to actually win one. Correct. This is the week. They play, they play at Seattle, at the Rams, first against Cleveland, and then at New England. They're not – unless week – it would be great in week 17 if Belichick says, I don't want them to get Trevor Lawrence. I'm not going to play my guy. That's not even out of the question. We, be like, not, we just said Cleveland's not as good as their record. In the yeah, but the, this Jets team is terrible, though. RJ, come on. Jets win this week. I got the Jets outright. I'm gonna take the Jets against the spread. I don't. I don't want to make it. I'll. I'll make it a best bet. Screw it. Um, I learned my lesson on taking the Jets as a best bet last week. That ain't happening I'm, again. I'm done. I'm done with I'm, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, all right, Lions at the Bears. Bears minus three and a half. Kenny over under forty four and a half. I like the I like the Lions. Um, the co- the coach getting buyer was the best thing that could ever happen, and it it, it worked for Atlanta. Uh, they were zero and five. I think they're four and two since then. It worked for Houston. They were oh they were zero and four, and they're they're they got a winning record. They're both both covering point spreads. Um, but you know the the big thing is we just saw Chicago. That that offense is not going to improve. They're not going to get any better. They're 28th in DVOA right now. They're the 32nd offense in, in the NFL. Um, their defense is fourth, but you know what? Without Hicks in the lineup, um, Green Bay, anybody does whatever they want against them. I read a story the other day. I didn't go back to look at it. I didn't document it, but it said last year when Hicks did not play, the Bears allowed twice as many points per game to their opponent than when he did play. One guy, and he's a beast. And he stops the run. I don't know if he's 100% healthy. I just think the Lions are going to have a, a nice, uh, easy game here. Um, and, and I think that Stafford has a big game. Has a big, there's a big advantage of quarterback. I don't think there's a, a big difference in talent between these two teams. It's just Matt, Matt Patricia really underachieved with what he had. So I'm, I'm taking the Lions here. And I hope Hicks doesn't play. If he doesn't, I think the game you'll see go to pick. Well, it seemed like he was really close to playing and he got ruled out just before the game. So I would expect him back here, but you're right. He might not be a hundred percent. This is absolutely textbook fired coach bounce here. Players seem to loathe Patricia. Not, not like they did um, with, uh, you know, Atlanta. They didn't loathe, loathe the coach there. They didn't loathe the coach in Houston. I don't think, but it seemed like all the ex players in, in Detroit really went in on Patricia after he got fired. So Detroit played Chicago in week one with no Kenny Galladay. So even if he doesn't come back here, they've been in this situation before they racked up 426 yards of offense. Then they collapsed late. Like the, like the, the, the beginning of the end for Patricia was in week one. Um, Chicago couldn't have looked worse coming off a of bye, playing their biggest rival. If they were going to show up, it should have been for that game against green Bay and then make that a game. Uh, and they didn't. So I think this could be another close game that comes down to a field goal. If you can get the hook here with three and a half, you got to love the Lions. So I have them as a best bet too. I don't have either one as a best bet, but I'd lean to the Bears. And the reason I'd lean to the Bears is Trubisky's actually played well against the Lions in, in, in some of those games. And, and so I do think he showed some life in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was garbage time. Uh, but I, the Lions are terrible, too. I mean, OK, Patricia was a bad coach, but that team stinks. I mean, the, the, the defense is terrible. It, it, it can't rush the pass or they don't cover anybody. They're not very good on defense. And, and so. Uh, what's the strongest unit on the field in this game? It's it's the defense of the of the Bears, and so I'll I'll take the th- lay the three points with the with the Bears. No way, dead cat bounce. It's worked all season long. It's going to work again. Uh, it's what is it, the Goldilocks? The porridge is uh, too cold, too hot, just right. That's uh, that's that's the the Matt Patricia thing. Like if Bill Bill O'Brien falls in the middle, uh, Dan Quinn's too cold. Matt Patricia, too hot. He or maybe he's the too cold guy. I don't know which one it is, but he is hated by those. Those guys were having mimosa parties at the end of the season because they didn't have to play for him anymore last year. They're going to come out. They're going to play well. The, my one concern here is Kenny Galladay. I just need Kenny Galladay to play, and the and the Lions will upset the Bears as their fraudulent spiral continues. Suck it, Bears! You stink. Lions outright. Uh, Saints at Falcons, Pete. Saints minus two and a half over under 45 and a half. I'm going to continue a trend that I've had every week. If the game had played in Denver last week with an actual quarterback, I still think they had a chance to win that game. I'm going against Taysom Hill every single week. He is awful with a capital A. Everybody gets so caught up in Taysom Hill mania. You know what it is? He's the right-handed Tebow. That's what he is. Oh. He can run. He can move around. Yeah, he throws the ball a little bit better than Tebow, but not much. And I think the Falcons have seen him already. They understand what he does and doesn't do. Uh, they lost to him at home. He didn't barely even do anything in that game, and people were raving about him. So I think that was a game where the Fal- Falcons couldn't protect him. I think they'll protect better here, hit some shots. Uh, I'll take Atlanta to win the game outright. 
Taysom Hill. Atlanta's look great under Raheem Morris. Uh, aside from that first New Orleans game, I have time for revenge here. You know, I, I do would lean to the Falcons on the line. New Orleans coming off that weird Denver game. Maybe it messes with their rhythm. They switched up their game plan, you know, the night before and decided to just be run, run, run and not, not bother throwing the ball. So New Orleans more of a rushing offense with Taysom, but Atlanta's D is sixth in DVOA against the run. I do think Atlanta's going to win, but at two and a half, I can't resist teasing them up through three and seven here. So Falcons are going to be part of my teaser this week. I didn't uh, put in a play on this game, but I'm playing it under, and I agree with Pete that Taysom Hill is not a good quarterback, and he is the right-handed uh, uh, Tebow. Four straight unders for the Saints, um, and, and Ryan Morris, since he's become the head coach, this team slowed down. They're playing better defense, and they're under four of their last five games. I think it's a big game, obviously, within the division. Both teams' defenses are tough. Um, I'm, I'm going to go under the total here. I, I think that's a good call. I like and the under is suspiciously low for a Saints Falcons game at 45 and a half. Plus the second divisional matchup. Typically you see less scoring, a little bit tighter. They know they know some things about them. And yeah, Raheem Morris, he's looking for a head coaching job. I, I mean, I think Atlanta, I mean, I hate I hate giving interim coaches the full time job, but I think they at least gotta look at him, right, Pete? They'll look at him. You think he gets it? Look, Raheem was very immature in his first job. I mean, they're, you know, he, he'd be the first one to admit that he wasn't ready had, for it. So we had LeGarrette Blunt on the um, Twitch stream uh, for fantasy football today on Sunday. And he was like, yeah, he's just too young, man. Like he was, th- he was 33 when he got hired. It's crazy. Yeah. And he, he didn't, he did put all the work in. He'd be the first one to tell you he wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he, he's another guy who deserves a head coaching job. And if he keeps winning in Atlanta, they're not out of it yet either. Now that would be something. I mean, if they, if the playoffs, they have to, they have to hire him. Clearly, they have to run the table, but they're not out of it yet either. That that seventh spot could go to a team with a what eight eight, eight record. It's possible, and there the could NFC? be an eight spot too. We don't. I mean, I don't think it's right. likely. But no, has there been, like, any, been any more talk about the NFL um, adding another team? If the if if they have to play week uh, eighteen, they will. It's okay. only if they exp- they can do it for whatever reason they want. I think, right? But, but it's they wanted but, but to do they, that. They, if, they if said they're they only going to do it if they go to eighteen, though. If they did add another team and, and went to eight, they they would go then by winning percentage, which would p- make the N- NFC least winner um, the the bottom team, and they would play the one seed on the road. No, no, they said they're not going to recede. No, they're not going to recede. No. They're not going to recede. Okay. Here's the other thing. If it, it, what it essentially does, if you go to the eighth playoff team, is you don't reward the one seed. Right. Exactly. Well, that's why I thought they were. It would be a great idea because why do you want? Why do you want the Washington Redskins to be the three or four seed? You know. Yeah, I think uh, they should receive for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Eagles at Packers. Packers minus eight and a half. Pete over under forty seven. Yeah, the Eagles are dreadful. Well, let's be honest about it. They're bad. Carson, it's Carson a bad, Wentz is the right-handed Taysom Hill. It's a no. He's not. It's a bad team. The team stinks. The offensive line can't block. He gets hit on every play. Now he's hold the ball. Now his eyes have come down. The receivers are bad. It's a bad offense. They still play decent defense at times, coming after the quarterback. But against Rodgers, forget about it. He's going to carve them up. And they're not good enough on offense to compete. I'll lay the eight and a half. It's a big number, really big number. I hate this, but I'm going to lay the eight and a half anyways. That's my work. My worry is this is a sleepy spot for Green Bay after taking it to Chicago last week, and Philly's D looks solid. Uh, hard to expect much from the offense, 17 points in three straight weeks, but two of them were had last-second touchdowns, you know, real, the most garbage of garbage time touchdowns. So I can't see Philly going into Green Bay and picking up a win. I love teasing it under three. It's my other part of my teaser. I'm taking Green Bay minus two and a half and Atlanta plus eight and a half is the teaser this week. Yeah, lo- love the teaser. That would be the way I would go in this football game would be a tease Green Bay down. You're, you're crossing four key numbers. You're in good shape. Uh, all right, I got nothing on here, but yeah, the was it the Falcons and Packers for your teaser, RJ? I like that teaser, RJ. That's Falcons a good one. Packers, Falcons, Packers. Yeah, that's right. right I'm I like it. That in. I'm gonna put that in personally, personal play. You know, not not a client play. We don't have we don't have one game for the parlay yet. Oh, we don't have one game for the parlay. Have we? <laughs> uh, what about the Lions? Oh, no, you like the Bears, Pete? Um, uh oh, you like the 49ers, so we can't do the, the Bills. Should we Broncos maybe? Yeah, Broncos plus fourteen. I like that. We're all in that. You like one. the Rams or the Cardinals? Rams. All right, let's make is it Broncos plus fourteen. Yeah, but RJ liked the Cardinals. I thought. Yeah, I was kind of on the fence. It's just the value on the face looked like it's on the Cardinals, but but uh, Kyler doesn't look very good right now. He looks like he's banged up. So I wouldn't mind picking taking the Rams. I just wanted to stay away from this. 
Okay. Well, let's do Rams, Broncos, and uh, wait, Falcons. I added the Saints under. Um, and I, and yeah, that's that number's come down so low now. Two and a half on the Saints. Amazing. But are I, you okay I, with the Falcons, Kenny? Um, yeah, I'm okay with it. I, I, it's hard for me to, I mean, that's such a low number, but I, if there's a good game for a letdown spot for the saints, this is it. And, uh, Taysom Hill really, you know, he, he looked good the first outing and that was against Atlanta. Now, now against Denver though, he did not look good. When I watched that game in the first, I thought, how's either one of these teams going to score? So he may have problems second time around against the Falcons. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're letting you guys go after the break, unless you want to stick around for the rest of the games. I'm assuming you don't. I'm um, ready for college hoops. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah, college hoops starting soon. Uh, so it's either going to be the Falcons as the third leg of the parlay or looking at the rest of the bets, the way RJ, RJ and I think, it's either the Falcons or the Giants Seahawks under. So you guys decide. Yeah, it's a good trend I saw last week was uh, um, same season home revenge within two weeks. It's 13-2 and two ATS the, oh. since 2016. Falcons it, it is. And, and, it's, and, it's been, and it's been over since the last 15 years, I think it's uh, been over 60% with a, with a much bigger sample size. But same season, home revenge within two weeks of playing each other, 13 and two ATS. All right, so Broncos Falcons. plus 14, Rams minus three, Falcons plus two and a half. That's Love it. Podcast Love part. it. Yep. Right. We That's a winner. winner. I'm putting That's a RJ, winner. RJ's teaser in right now too. Yeah. Fal- Falcons, right Packers. Before it moves. Yeah. Uh, that's a good teaser. Okay. Once RJ releases it, it's going to move a couple points. That's right. I already released. He's RJ it. White, man. He's RJ White. That moves. White, teaser yeah. of the week comes out on Wednesday, so just check into <laughs> CBSSports.com. It's already up. It's actually moved the opposite way. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. Say goodbye to Kenny and Pete. See you guys. Uh, See you guys. We'll go back, RJ, and I'll rip through the rest of the. Give game. me my two hundred, Brinson. <laughs> In twenty twenty three, pal. <laughs> So Kenny and Pete are gone. Let's get through the rest of the games. Only have five games to get through. Cowboys and Ravens is currently off as we await the Lamar Jackson news. But Bengals Dolphins is a go. Dolphins minus 11 and a half over under 42, RJ. It's Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Brandon Allen slash Ryan Finley. Yeah, Miami played a conservative offensive game against a bad team last week, and that game went way under. I think this is a similar game here. Since he should be uh, similar, they're not going to score much against a Miami defense that's third in points per drive, especially with Brandon Allen at quarterback. So, since his offense had just 155 yards last week, should have been their third straight game with 10 points or less. But they had that that kickoff touchdown. Um, can't expect that again, obviously. Value on the Bengals, it's just the line is so high. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I don't trust the Dolphins' offense, but I like the under better. So under 42 is my best bet. I, I like that a lot. Um, I got 11 and a half is a ton for the Dolphins. but And the Bengals kept it close against the Giants, but I think that the – It was kind of fluky, though. Yeah, it was very fluky. And I think the Dolphins are better. I, I do agree with you. I think it'll be conservative. I, I, I think that under is a very good look there. All right. I will. I have no play on that. I this game. Don't watch this game. But, but I do like the under. I think that's a good play. Um, and also, we don't know if Tua could play. That's a little bit of a concern. Like they could end up going to Tua. If they go to Tua, was, the under is a stone cold lock. And that was one of the reasons that that Jets loss hurt because when we picked it on Wednesday, we thought Tua was playing. He yeah. Said on Monday he's still the quarterback. So there's no reason for us not to think that Tua would play that game. So that was one of the reasons I love the Jets because I think that offense did not look good with him in there. And then uh, Fitzpatrick plays and you're like, well, you know, so much. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to ask for a do over like Pete and try to get that game off my, my ledger, but, but you know, that's just what happens. Uh, Washington at the Steelers, Steelers minus eight and a half over under 42 and a half. You like the Washington football team here, don't you? Yeah, the Washington rush offense is hitting its stride, 346 yards in the last two games. And you need to run against this tough Pittsburgh defense to beat them. We saw the Ravens do it in that first game. They didn't beat them, but they, you know, it was a back and forth game. It could have went either way. That defensive touchdown really helped them out there. Plus, is a huge rest advantage uh, to Washington. If effectively, they get a bye with Pittsburgh playing their game six days later last week than Washington did. Uh, Washington defense is fifth in DVOA, sixth in points per drive. They can turn this into a low-scoring brawl that the Steelers have to play, like similar to that Ravens game that ended, what, like 17-12. This could be a similar type of game here. Washington could even beat the Steelers. I wouldn't rule that out. Eight and a half is just too many points here. If you can get it over a touchdown, definitely take Washington. Yeah. Uh, it's a prime letdown spot. The Steelers aren't beating anybody good. Like now the one concern I would have is that the Steelers will be able to pass effectively 
uh, with their little dink and dunk stuff on Washington. I think that'll, that'll probably be something they can do pretty well. Ben's getting the Ben Roethlisberger's getting the ball out very quick and they have tons of weapons. They didn't play the weapons didn't play great against Baltimore. Uh, Washington is, is a good, I mean, they're, they're, they're not a terrible team. Alex Smith will keep him in this. This reeks of like 17, 14. Yeah. Final, like a low scoring grinder where the Steelers steal a win. I wouldn't be surprised though, if Washington ended up winning it. So uh, I will take, I, I like Washington in this spot as well. Giants at Seahawks, Seahawks minus 10 over under 46 and a half. As I teased before the, um, the break, we're, we're, uh, we're sharing a brain here. The under seems like a great spot. It's a, it's a higher number than you would think. We don't, I don't, Daniel Jones is not playing. Probably not playing. We don't know at this Why point. Why would they play recording. He, he actually did get, I think, a little bit of work in practice, surprisingly, on Thursday. So maybe he does. But I would assume they put him at questionable or doubtful, and then he just doesn't play. Um, you know, no reason can hear. So with McCoy likely starting, I expect Seattle's offense to be conservative and avoid mistakes and get the win somewhere like we saw to Miami's uh, last week, Pittsburgh last week. You know, it's just get get the win and uh, don't make any mistakes. Giants pass offense is 28th in DVOA with Jones and McCoy is certainly a step down uh, in that Seattle defense is coming on strong. Yep. So I do expect, you know, Giants to hardly score any points in this game. They'll want to run, but Seattle's D is third in yards per rush. So I think it's going to be a lot of trying to run, take the pressure off McCoy and you get in third and long and he throws incomplete and then you punt. So it seems like a 20 to seven, 20 to 10 type of game that never sniffs the over to me. Well, and the other thing too here is that the Seahawks have, over the last four or five weeks, they have been extremely run heavy. They have flipped the Russ Cook, let Russ Cook narrative on its head. Russ has a microwave now. He, Russ is reheating stuff later in the game um, and he is not cooking. And as a result, they're going to run the ball a bunch early on. That doesn't play well against the Giants. The Giants are good against the run or decent against the run. Leonard Williams is playing pretty good football too, by the way. Um, and I also think James Bradbury, who just had a really good game against Mike Evans, will be able to at least limit DK Metcalf from running wide open in the field. All of those factors, the way both teams will approach it, lend itself to an under spot. So I love the under as a best bet here as well. Jaguars at Vikings. Vikings minus 10 and a half. Over under 52. Yeah, I want to like Jacksonville here at plus 10 and a half, especially since it's it's 10 and a half and not 10. Their offense looked much better last week with Glennon at quarterback, despite the absences at receiver, which we didn't know when we when we were talking up to Jacksonville. I remember I said I thought they would win or they could win, and they almost pulled it off. You know, they have two-point conversion away from being a tie game. No turnovers by Jacksonville last week. That was the big key. Minnesota has been turnover prone at least seven in their last three games. Minnesota is clearly the superior team. It could easily blow them out here. So I, I can't feel confident taking Jacksonville at plus 10 and a half, but that would be my lean. Um, and I don't love anything on the over or under either. Probably would lean over, but I'm just going to stay away from this game. Uh, I got the over as a best bet here. I think we see a lot of points. I think Mike Glennon is a DFS play this week. I think, yeah, I think they're going to, I think they're going to score some points. My guy Glenn is going to toss it around a little bit. He, look, he is a huge step up from um, friggin' what's his name? Jake Luton. Jake Luton. Thank you. And you know, Doug Marone wants to win. So he's rolling out Glennon. I, Glennon's playing for some cash. I mean, if he plays well, he'll get more, you know, he'll get, he'll, he'll have film and uh, stats to throw out there when he's, when he's, when he's looking for another job in the off season. Uh, maybe the Jaguars want to bring him back. Who knows? That, that seems unlikely considering they'll be have, have, you know, Trevor Lawrence or, or Justin Fields, but uh, this is a big stretch for Glennon. So I think he'll play well. I think he'll sling the ball around. I think both teams will put up points and we'll see some big jailbreak plays from James Robinson and Dalvin cook over 52 in this spot. I would also, I'd like the Jaguars as well. Colts minus three and a half at the Texans over under 51. Yeah, my lean here to the Colts. I would want to get three though, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play it. Um, Watson's playing well lately, but this is Houston's toughest matchup since the bye. I'm not docking Indy too much for last week with those defensive absences late in the week. Um, they are pretty banged up here though, so uh, you know Costanzo might be out at left tackle. I don't have a ton of confidence in their in their offense. So they're talking about moving Braden Smith to left tackle if he's out. Yeah, and then you got to Then you so you're getting two spots. So you're messing up two spots of the line because the you got to replace your left tackle and your right tackle. Then just the right tackle moved to left tackle. Yeah. Um, um, so not great in the center might, you know, center, I think is questionable. Yeah. I don't know if he's practicing yet. Um, you know, by the time you hear this, maybe the listeners will know better. So I just don't have a ton of offense confidence in that offense. Um, so I don't want to play the late three and a half. I mean, maybe you look to the under, cause I think that defense is going to bounce back. A uh, 51 is kind of a high number for this matchup. So, uh, those are my leans, but I'm not playing this game. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I had the over in here. I'm going to take it off. I think I liked the over before the Will Fuller news. I think Cooks will see a bunch of volume, and that's fine. And Watson can sling it around even if the Colts' defense is good. But with the Forrest Buckner and Autry back, it, there's too many concerns. The Colts love an under, and they can slow a game down pretty easily. So uh, I would lean towards the Colts. But three and a half makes me think that, you know, they want you to take the Texans. I think Indianapolis, Houston's terrible against the run. I think Jonathan Taylor could come back. He had a really nice game the last time out. Run really well against Houston. They can put the clamps down on Brandon Cooks to a large degree. And Deshaun Watson just won't have anybody to throw to. So uh, I will take I, I will take that best bet. I had the best bet over on the list. I'm going to take it off. And I would lean towards the Colts. Uh, as we mentioned, Ravens and Cowboys is off. You can't, I mean, I got to talk about a game that's off. We don't know if Lamar is playing. Yeah, the super contest line for this when it came out was nine and a half, Ravens nine and a half. That obviously assumes Lamar would play, would be available because you wouldn't put, you know, lay 10 with with uh, with Robert Griffin in there. Huge rest advantage for Dallas here, um, just like in that Washington matchup. But they're not playing that well, so it's hard to trust them as much as I would as I do Washington in that matchup. So with no idea for who's playing, we know it's a stay away for us. If anything, speculative play on Dallas, if you can find the line, like nine and a half now with Baltimore struggling and just not knowing about what's happening with Lamar. But I doubt you can find the line because you know they want to be confident he plays. So, uh, Yeah, so we can't really give you anything until we know if Lamar is playing. So that's that. Uh, the parlay, we mentioned the pick six podcast parlay. It is Rams minus three, Falcons plus two and a half, and Broncos plus 14. Uh, we hit our parlay so many times early in the season. It's been a few weeks since we got one. I'll, I will readily admit that uh, William Hill and CBS Sports com- partnered. They were our partners. They teamed up and uh, created a podcast parlay pick them spectacular thing, spectacular, whatever. Anyway, you go to cbssports.com slash parlay. And uh, from Tuesday through Sunday, you pick five teams against the spread and we give away a thousand dollars guaranteed every week. Odds provided by William Hill. I'm going to give out six teams. RJ will take one away and that will be our, my five team podcast parlay. I can't enter, but you can go toss it in and see if I'll win you money. I am over on this contest since we started. Here are the teams, RJ. Rams minus three. Jaguars plus 10 and a half. Jets plus eight. Washington plus eight and a half. Falcons plus two and a half. And the Patriots as a pick'em. Jets. Okay, Jets it is. I am not I'm do not put real American dollars on the Jets anymore. That's that's probably a good idea. They're it's I mean, they're literally like the 2016 Browns. They're uh yeah, it's we got caught a little you too often. To, you on tried to you tried to pick the Browns the every week. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of like I mean, Jaguars, Washington, Falcons, Patriots, Rams. I don't hate that parlay. Yeah, I don't love a couple of those teams, but uh, just uh, Jets are an auto pullout. Like once I was like, I was keeping track. I was like, mm, maybe the Jaguars, maybe I the said, Rams. Yeah, and, you, Jets, and I'm like, all right, done. Jets. I don't even need to read the rest of them. I don't. I know what I'm pulling out. Uh, here are the best bets from the podcast. Uh. Thankfully, I think Debo kept mine in there. I'm not sure. Pete has Atlanta plus three, has the Packers minus eight and a half, the Broncos plus 14, the Chargers is a pick them, the Titans, Browns under, and the Rams minus three. Kenny has the Browns, Titans over, the Rams, the Patriots is a pick them, the Lions plus three and a half. The Broncos plus 14, the Bills minus one, and the Raiders minus eight. RJ has the Pats as a pick them. Lions plus three and a half. Browns plus six. Bills minus one. Miami Denver under 42 and a half. Giants, Seahawks over 46 and a half. Under. Green Bay. What's that? Under 46 and a half. Oh, sorry. Under 46 and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, Teasing Green Bay minus two, Green Bay down to two and a half and Atlanta up to plus eight and a half and Washington plus eight and a half. I have the Lions, the 49ers, the Pats, Jags, Vikings over, Giants, Seahawks under. And I also have the 49ers. And I'm going to make sure I didn't miss one. One second. I said the Lions, 49ers. Oh, Rams and the Rams under as well. So I'm doubling down on that game. Two units on the Rams. Love the Rams this week. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? That's right. 
Cardinals and the over it is. Uh, all right. That's uh, that's the show. That's the uh, that's the best bets podcast. Last show of the week, unless something crazy happens over the weekend. RJ, always a pleasure, buddy. We will uh, we'll be back on for the Sunday night recap. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. See you guys later.